everyone, and welcome to another episode of VMblog's Expert Interview Series. Today, we're speaking with Laurent Haimovich, the co-founder and CTO of Rookout. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, David. Hey, everybody. It's great to be here and join you to speak with you. All right. Well, I guess to kind of kick things off, why don't you provide viewers with a quick overview about Rookout and, uh, and then maybe talk about some of the problems that you all solve. So Rookout is a debugging and data collection platform that allows you to see into your code and to instrument it live. Essentially, kind of like, think of it like a debugger. And traditionally, you use debugger, you set breakpoints in the code, and then the code stops and you can see exactly what's going on. Rookout provides a similar experience using non-breaking breakpoints. You can select any line of code, set a non-breaking breakpoint, and then see exactly what's going on in that line of code. See the variable values, see the stack trace, and understand what your code is doing. And Rookout does it across all technologies and runtimes. And so you can use it on your laptop, you can use it in the cloud, you can even use it in production. And so you can truly uh, gain a, the level of understanding you're used to uh, from when you're running your code on your laptop, except you can get that level of understandability, that level of certainty in any environment where your code is running. And and so one of the you know things we're talking about uh, recently with a lot of folks is the rise of Kubernetes. Uh, you know how does the rise of Kubernetes contribute to the additional complexities that developers have to deal with? So uh, like many technologies, uh, when a new technology arrives, it brings its own debugging challenges with them. I think the most important challenge in debugging Kubernetes and other cloud native technologies either they tend to be very production first. They run very well in production, but they quite often don't run all that well on your laptops. Whether it's because you have multiple services and you can't spin them all, whether because you're using cloud services that can't be spun locally. And so when you combine it all together, you just can't easily spin it up, attach a debugger and see into it. And we're seeing more and more of our customers spinning up development clusters, spinning up the development workloads in the cloud. And so it's becoming that much harder to connect to them and see through them. And another big challenge coming from Kubernetes is the software development paradigm of a service mesh. When you're using a service mesh, uh, you can't just break into the app. Unlike a monolith, if you break into a monolith, you break the spread and everything stops. And if you're running in a service mesh environment and you're breaking one process, everything else keeps going. And as they're relying on the net network connect connections to keep everything alive, you're gonna start seeing timeouts, you're gonna see disconnections, things, and everything goes wrong. And quite often in a service mesh environment, once you stop a single process, everything goes wrong, everything goes bad, and you need something that allows you to collect the data without stopping the application, without intervening. And that's another great value for having using non-breaking breakpoints instead of more traditional breakpoints. And then one of the things that, you know, as I've been researching and looking into uh, Rookout, uh, you know, it says that you guys are, you're pioneering the category of software understandability. Can you explain what that means to our viewers and uh, how it differs from observability? And maybe, and maybe even talk about why that's important for developers. So I think the best analogy for understanding software understandability is think of yourself as a software engineer, other software engineers out there. I mean, we all know how to write code, some of us more, some of us less. And there are very basic tasks, such as I don't know, sorting a data structure. If I were to give you a task of sorting a tree or sorting an array, it's something you could probably do in a matter of minutes. But if I were to give you that same task within a complex system, one you're not very familiar with, then all of a sudden it becomes messy. What's the representation of that data structure? Where within the system is it accessible? Where is the correct place to solve it? How is it encoded? And so on and so forth. And all of a sudden, the challenge isn't just writing the code, it's understanding the system well enough to know how and where to write the code. And that's, in essence, understandability. How well we are able to understand the system makes a huge impact on how fast we can deliver new features, how easily can we deliver fixed bugs, 
and in general, how well can we deliver high quality software? And the more we understand the system, the better we can do it. There are many options, for many tools for understanding the system, but debuggers have always been uh, the most straightforward approach to better understanding software. And if you look at observability, observability is a, is a, uh, an area that has been pioneered over the last five years or so, led by SREs and other ops people, who are trying to, uh, as they define it, understand the state of the system by looking at, at inputs and outputs. Essentially, when you look, when you think of observability, you're saying you know what the system is supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be processing transactions. It's supposed to return successful HTTP codes and so on. And you're asking yourself, is the system working as it should? Is it doing what it's supposed to be doing? And you're asking us, and you're answering that question by monitoring latency, request rates, error rates, and so on and so forth. And that's what SREs are asking. Uh, when you are uh, as working as a software engineer, uh, the question of whether the system is working as designed or not becomes that much more complex. I mean, we all know that uh, analogy about a project manager, product manager, the developer, and the customer, and what they're all imagining. And everybody is imagining the system differently. Everybody is thinking of the system differently. And as a software engineer, you're often trying to get to the truth, knowing how the system truly operates, not just what state it's in, but what is it doing? How is it doing it? Why is it doing it? And even more challenging is that as a software engineer, you're getting new tasks every day, you're getting new assignments, and each of those assignments has a, comes with its own set of questions. He, how, who is calling this piece of code? What arguments is it being called with? How often is it being called? And so on and so forth. So it not, it's not just about knowing if the system is working well or not, but it's about truly understanding the business logic and keeping track of that. And for that, you need a more agile uh, data collection layer and something that goes deeper than just monitoring the high level elements of the system. And if you could maybe explain why Rookout's uniquely situated to help teams understand their Kubernetes environments. So, as I mentioned, we're seeing that Kubernetes environments tend to be very complex, have a lot of moving parts. And I would say in general in software engineering, uh, when things go wrong, uh, or even when, when things before things go wrong, you're trying to understand something, reproducing the behavior is the number one priority. Trying to get to capture the behavior so that you can observe it, so that you can learn from it, so that you can understand what's going on. And when you are working in such a very complex environment with so many, so many moving parts, reproducing something in a different environment can become a nightmare. You need to get the right services, you need to get everything set up, you need to migrate data, you need to make sure the latency is the same, versions are the same, and so on and so forth. And so getting whatever is happening, whether it's in a dev cluster, integration cluster, or even production, to reproduce on your local environment is a nightmare. And just pushing a, a, a log line and going through the entire CI CD cycle, or even worse, doing it manually, just to get a piece of data is very time consuming, very expensive. And using Rookout non breaking breakpoints, you can just click a button, instantly get the data. And best of all, the thing is, when it comes to understanding, it's a journey. It's not, I need one piece of data and then I know everything. You are constantly asking questions, you are constantly writing a hypothesis, and you're constantly testing them. And with every answer comes a new question. And when the process takes hours to answer every single question, then that's very tedious and it hampers your progress and it's very frustrating. Using Rookout, you can ask and answer questions in a matter of seconds. And so you can iterate faster and you can move faster on your journey to understand your software and to adapt it to your business needs. And is there any way we can jump into the product and maybe get a quick demo and see what it looks like and have you show how a developer can better understand their Kubernetes applications? Of course. So here I have an example of Kubernetes application. Uh, this is a Java application deployed right now to the cloud, to Google Cloud, and it's as production grade as a demo can get. It has a ingress, a DNS records, and so on and so forth. And through this 
application. It's very simple to do up. I can go ahead and add tasks to it. Now, using Rookout, I can go into that application as it's running right now in the cloud and see what's going on inside of it. I want to start by logging into Rookout. And right here, I can see all the applications I've connected to my cluster. As you can see, I have multiple applications and coming from multi -re multiple repositories. Some of them even have multiple pods running them. Some of them are single pods. And using Rookout, it's as simple as selecting the code repository I want. You can see this code repository is only running on a single pod. And I can go ahead and debug it, just like I would attach to a workload running on my own machine. And as you can see, source code has been automatically loaded for me directly from GitHub. Rookout detects what's running in that environment on the fly and allows me to see the source code for that. And here you can see the add to do. It's the REST endpoint that serves when I'm adding a to do. Using traditional monitoring and observability tools, I would focus on the existing metrics, tracing, and logs that are already there. But every time I would want to change them, I would have to edit the code and redeploy. Instead, using Rookout, it's as simple as clicking here and adding a non breaking breakpoint. Now, if I'm going to add another task, let's edit, I'm instantly going to get a message from that line. And so I can see exactly what are the variables. I can see the stack trace of how we got here. I can see the tracing information for that request, and I can even see additional information on the process. And all of that happens instantaneously. Now, as the application obviously kept going, it's a non-breaking breakpoint. I can't step in or step over. But what I can do is that I can set multiple breakpoints. And if I'm going to add another task, I'm going to see how the, how the code runs through those breakpoints line by line. And so I can easily see what's going on. I can even watch through the code. And I mean, if there are multiple users running on the system, I can see everything that's happening. Let's just say. And now I can see all this data coming in. Now, Rookout has a lot of features built on top of that. For instance, we support conditional breakpoints. Uh, we support a, a variety of uh, performance and security related features so that you can safely use it in production. And all in all, Rookout provides you with an end to end experience that allows you to see into your code. And even better, you can go ahead and export the data you are collecting using Rookout to any uh, analytic tools you are already using, whether you're using Lightstep or New Relic or App Dynamics. You can just go ahead and export the data with a click of a button, so you can create new metrics, new logs, new traces, or new alerts without writing more code, redeploying, or restarting. Well, that was great. I appreciate uh, all the information and the, uh, and the demo, which was really good as well. Uh, for the viewers that are watching, you know, where can they go to find out more information about Rookout and the things that you've shown or the, uh, the demo that you've shown today? Of course. So, you can check out our website, rookout.com. We even have a sandbox where you can experience the product for yourself without having to deploy. We provide with a pre-installed application, a test application that you can play around with and see how the breakpoints behave. And you can also reach to me on Twitter, Liran others for last uh, right there. And I'd be happy to discuss with you uh, Rookout and Kubernetes and how they can make your lives better. Great. Well, thanks a lot. We appreciate your time today, and uh, we look forward to see what you guys have in the coming months. Thank you very much. It's great being here. All right.